have elevated politics. And here's what they've done. They've taken Old Testament or Old Covenant terminology, Old Covenant stories, blended it with their politics and globbed it onto the message and the person of Jesus. And it's just sick. And they're, they're, they're prioritizing politics over mission. So, under Stanley, has come out in full defense of Rick Warren. <laughs> so, we are going to set the record straight for under Stanley. Because we can just not let this stand, especially defending Rick Warren. Everything is on video, guys. Okay? Everything is on video. So we're going to present it to you so you get to see. He's been quiet lately, but for some reason he decided to come back. So we're going to take an understanding. Who is understanding? Understanding is the senior pastor of uh, North Point Community Church. One of the biggest churches out there in Atlanta. They have, last time they had eight campuses. I don't know how many they have here. Uh, his church is uh, welcoming, okay, to the rainbow and the whole nine yards. Okay, so this is understanding. Not only that, understanding advocates that we need to unhitch the Old Testament. Not only should you unhitch the Old Testament, you don't even need the 66 books. All you need is the, is the story of Jesus. But the story of Jesus, you're going to get it from history. Not from the 66 books. Because that's all you need. So when you ask, understand it. So, but how do you know the story of Jesus? Don't you need the Bible to know the story of Jesus? So that's understanding for you guys. And hitch the Old Testament. All that in print and on video the whole nine years. So now let's take a listen to how understanding is defending uh, the indefensible. So we have the videos, okay? We've gone to the way back. We've gone to the archive, Rosie, okay? <laughs> so uh, we're going to show, understand it, what he says, and then we'll play a video to see if what he's saying is going to uh, to hold any water. All right. So understand is here. So let's... Grew up in church, and we don't want to be church for church people. We've done that. We saw where that led. It makes people cynical and critical. And they turn their backs to community and everybody doesn't agree with them. They're just wrong and they're going to hell anyway. And if you get saved, come on in, but we can't have anything to do with you. Like Peter going, I know I need to go in there. I know I need to go in there, but I just can't go in there. There it is all over again. So unfortunately, this is why I'm talking about this. Unfortunately, much of that progress that you were a part of creating in other churches, not just us, much of that progress is being undermined and reversed like crazy right now. With all the political nonsense in the last few years, it has picked up speed like crazy. And here's what happened. The people fueling it are conservative. And I'm so, I'm so theologically conservative. I'm even politically conservative. But this whole thing has been fueled by conservative, fearful, fundamentalists, don't have time to define that, academics and pastors. And churches, ch church leaders are resurrecting old barriers that we spent years tearing down and they're adding new barriers. Now I'll give you a quick example. I texted him this morning, told him I was gonna talk about him in church. Um, one of the two people who really launched this movement way back in the late 70s is Rick Warren. Purpose Driven Life. Before he wrote The Purpose Driven Life, he wrote The Purpose Driven Church. That book sold millions of copies to pastors and it was a book about how to create a church that's for outsiders, for unchurched people. I mean, he, he inspired so many of us, right? To, 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 get, to help get the church back on mission. He is a modern church reformer. There's no way about, around it. Last year, some of you know about this. Last year, his denomination kicked him out of the denomination for something immoral, no. Something illegal, no. Something that had to do with money, no. Because he's had some addiction, no. None of that you know, glamorous stuff, right? They kicked him out because he had the nerve to ordain three female staff members who were functioning as pastors. He ordained them as pastors, which is actually a legal status. It gave them a tax benefit. They're doing the work of all the other male pastors. He's like, well, why in the world would we not make them pastors? They're pastoring. And they weren't gonna go out and lead a church. They were working on his staff. He ordained three women and they kicked him out of the church. You don't get any more insider focused than that. 
And there's example after example after example after example after example. And here's the problem. Evangelical leaders, and I consider myself evangelical, not evangelistic, that's different, and evangelistic, but evangelical. Evangelical leaders are prioritizing politics over mission. And the people in their churches are buying it hook, line, and sinker and globbing on all their political views and my political views are as strong as your political views and mine are right, okay? Just wanna let you know right up front, okay? <laughs> you think yours are, not right? Because we all feel that way. You wouldn't have a view if you didn't think it was the right thing to do, right? But they have elevated politics and here's what they've done. They've taken Old Testament or Old Covenant terminology, Old Covenant stories, blended it with their politics and globbed it on to the message and the person of Jesus. And it's just sick. And they're, they're, they're prioritizing politics over mission. <laughs> so that is understanding. So you've had understanding. According to him, Rick Warren was kicked out from his own denomination because he had elevated women staffers. That's what understand is telling us, okay? And believe it or not, understand is uh, uh, dad used to be, was uh, once upon a time, the president of the Southern Baptist Convention. So let's uh, take a look at Rick Warren himself. If what understand is telling us is true, okay? We have the receipts, guys. For 178 years. The SBC has been a blend of at least a dozen different tribes of Baptists. If you think every Baptist thinks like you, you're mistaken. What we share in common is a mutual commitment to the inerrancy and the infallibility of God's word and to the great commission of Jesus Christ. No one is asking any Southern Baptist to change their theology. I'm not asking you to agree with my church. I am asking you to act like a Southern Baptist who have historically agreed to disagree on dozens of doctrines in order to share a common mission. Since Southern Baptists have always allowed disagreement on doctrines of including the essential doctrines of salvation, why should this one issue cancel our fellowship? In 2013, when the Calvinists were under fire, Baptists agreed to disagree and the split was averted. Now, 10 years later, will we treat egalitarian Baptists with the same grace we showed the Calvinist? We should remove churches for all kinds of sexual sin, racial sin, financial sin, leadership sin, sins that harm the testimony of our convention. But the 1,928 churches with women on pastoral staff have not sinned. If doctrinal disagreements between Baptists are considered sin, we all get kicked out. You'll never get 100% of Baptists to agree 100% on 100% of doctrine. That's why our Constitution says that churches must closely identify, not completely identify, with our confession. Now, the Baptist faith and message is 4,032 words. Saddleback disagrees with one word. That's 99.9999999999 in agreement. Isn't that close enough? Al Mohler, who for some reason gets to speak twice and do the rebuttals, claims the phrase, the office of the pastor is limited to men, that that also includes every staff position too, and somehow it also prevents any woman from teaching but I was able to contact about half, over half of the original drafting committee of the Baptist Faith Message 2000, and seven of them told me Al was wrong. In fact, before the vote on the 2000 Baptist Faith and Message, even Al in his hometown newspaper said it didn't limit women from being assistant pastors. Go read it in the Courier Journal. If this precedent is set, Southern Seminary will have to change the name of the Billy Graham School since Billy Graham trained women pastors at our global training events and he endorsed the preaching ministry of his daughter saying Anne is the best preacher in, in the Graham family. Vote no. If this precedent is set, we'll have to rename our two. I'm very sorry, but the time has expired. So, they, uh, he ran out of time. 
and <laughs> they had to stop him okay that was during the southern baptist convention you only have three minutes rick warren was so used the previous uh convention he was on the mic for eight minutes so i think he thought he was gonna do the same thing this time around it did not work they'll be like oh no so that was him making a speech according to him admitting they have all these women pastors but that never worked they ended up uh kicking him still so now this is a picture okay uh this is the best that i could do because it's on instagram but here we go all right so this is at saddleback church okay they ordained three women pastors this is uh woman one right here woman two right here woman three right here and it's text over there reads yesterday was a historic night for saddleback church in many ways we ordained our first three women pastors liz Parfa, cynthia pity and kate edwards we commissioned three new elders anthony miller jeremiah Gole, and jason williams so they according to their own uh statement over here right they did uh commissioned women pastors and it's three of them and understand is telling us they did all that for tax purposes not only that a church is a 501c so the church is not paying taxes every person if you work you are to pay you you are to pay taxes so it doesn't matter what position you hold in a church if you're working you you're going to pay taxes not only that why should we compromise why should a church compromise on what the scripture says and teaches for the sake of tax benefits for the sake of that where does it say that like oh no you can do this when uh, that's pragmatism right we cannot compromise the word of god because of the irs not only that so whatever anderson was telling us it's not even true according to what uh these guys did right saddleback church they ordained three women pastors requiring his own record like okay we might disagree with these things but we shouldn't okay we can we, we agree on 99 whatever point one like no 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 the word of god is clear it doesn't matter if you agree 99 percent that one percent that you're disagreeing okay if it is the word of god we have an issue okay it's a doctrine issue we enough to divide over okay i cannot go to a church where a woman is a pastor okay i don't care if everything else is up and up everything else is fine but as long as it's a woman who preaches and teaches that church no way i cannot be a member of that church okay so somebody telling me like oh but violet they do everything uh they agree with you on everything else except on the women pastors no 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 that's not gonna fly okay that will not work at all that will not work at all that will not work at all i know my earpiece has been giving me problems lately yeah so that's uh so you know that's uh what has transpired with these guys so you see that because we showed the video of um uh, understanley and then requiring himself and them or then women pastors so who who's te who who's telling the truth over here understanley huh that's not why Rick Warren was not kicked out. Are you telling me Rick Warren was kicked out because he had uh, women uh, who were serving the church? Women are supposed to be serving in the church. Even up to now, the person who took over is Underwood and his wife. Uh, his wife. They are co-pastors. So it's not like these people change. They never change. They just picked up from wherever they stopped from. So it was right. They were right to kick them out because they still have women pastors even up to date.